lately. I've tried to shorten my messages up. <clears throat> now, will I do that tonight? I don't know, but I'll try. Amen. I'd like to turn your attention, attention to the book of Micah chapter 2. And be prepared that we need to keep fasting, keep praying, keep believing. Let's start 2016 off with a bang, okay? I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to get caught up in this resolution stuff. Man, let's just do it. Hallelujah. Let's just. Hallelujah. Woo! Next Sunday, Michael and Anne are going to get baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah! <laughs> this is, be careful, bro, Brother Michael. This is going to bite you. <clears throat> you know what? We, got, we was crazy for the devil long enough. It's time to get crazy for Jesus. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay. The book of Micah. I got to get back. <laughs> Micah chapter 2. <clears throat> We're going to read uh, from verse 6 through 13. Now, just pay attention to the word tonight, if you would. Micah, Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 6. Prophecy ye, ye not. Say they to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them. They shall not take shame. Oh, thou art named in the house of Jacob. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Or in other words, this is not your place. You don't belong here. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do, falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people, of a particular type people. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. Doesn't that sound familiar here tonight? Man, we've made a lot of noise here. I'm sorry, but you guys were noisy. I'm not saying that's bad. I, man, that's apostolic. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. I want to preach tonight for just a little bit, little bit here tonight about the God of our breakthrough. The God of our breakthrough. Brother Allrad, would you pray over this word? And the church says, God bless you, you may be seated. My question to the church tonight is simply, what is the true meaning of a breakthrough? The next question is, who can obtain a breakthrough? And then the third question is, where does a breakthrough come from? I find in Webster's Dictionary, under the noun, the word breakthrough simply means a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. 
it means that something extraordinary has just taken place. A breakthrough is something out of the ordinary way of life, of your everyday life. It is something that becomes sudden. It's dramatic. And it will turn your world upside down. Amen. Now listen to me as I go into this. It is also known as an instant, instance of achieving success in a particular sphere or activity. Now I'm going to tell you this apostolic people and this apostolic church. When we come to the house of God and we feel the glory of God, friend, I want you to know that this is an activity that is not of this sphere. It is not of this world. It is not of this earth. What we have been feeling tonight is not of anything that can be created by man. It's not created by governments. It's not created by kings. But rather, this what we have been feeling tonight is created created by God hallelujah hallelujah I'm just warming up a breakthrough is also known as a military movement or advance all the way through and beyond an enemy's front line of defense Hallelujah. What does that tell me, Brother Ty? It tells me, Brother uh, brother Peterson, uh, amen. It tells me, Brother Stewart, uh, that when I want a true breakthrough with God, I'm going to have to get through the enemy's line, uh, not just through it, but beyond it. Uh, I'm going to have to make up my mind. Uh, I'm not going to stay on the other side of the enemy's line uh, and be denied a breakthrough with God. Hear me, Saint of God. There's some of you that have let the devil beat you down too long and God is saying I am the God of a breakthrough in your life hallelujah we can shout over a fast song we can dance over fast music but you hear me right now I get more excited knowing that God has broke through and made a way for me in this world to live holy right and good hallelujah it's also known as an act or an instance of removing or surpassing an obstruction or restriction. It is also known as the overcoming of a stalemate. Have you felt like you have been in a stalemate with the world and with the devil? Has the world beat you back into a corner? Has the devil been telling you you can't get a healing? Has the devil been telling you you can't be touched? Has the devil been telling you you can't get victory over what is fighting against you? I'm here to tell you that we serve the God of a break through we serve the God that's able to break you through every circumstance of life hallelujah we heard preach this morning about the sin of remembrance that was a masterpiece you don't realize it church you heard a message one out of ten thousand hallelujah but tonight I'm here to tell you, the God that wants you to forget your past, He wants you to get beyond the obstacles. He wants to get beyond the obstructions. He wants you to get beyond the restrictions that you have put upon yourself, that others have put upon you. The devil's a liar. He knows he's a liar. He's lost. He knows he's lost. He cannot win. He knows he cannot win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. A breakthrough is any significant or sudden advance. Come here, bro. That's what you get for sitting on the platform. A breakthrough is any significant advance. 
God, I've been going through it. And the world has been against me. And the devil is pushing me back. And the devil is saying, no, you can't go to that altar. You can't run around that church. You can't dance in this spirit. Oh, no, you can't keep your hands down. Who do you think you are? You're just a failure. As a brother preached this morning, you've got a past. That's ugly. That's horrible. But the God that we serve is saying, listen, a breakthrough is any sudden. Amen. Advance. All of a sudden, you got to break through and, rake and run and get beyond your failures your mistakes and how you've fallen in times past a breakthrough is a sudden forward movement hallelujah brother angel get up here a minute hallelujah wasn't too many years ago you was a failure and the devil said you was no good Back up, brother. You're not a brother. You're a failure. But God tells us that a breakthrough is when we make an, an advance and we get a development in our spirit that says, I'm not standing back. I'm not staying where I'm at. I'm going to go forward with God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to some of you that the devil's held you back too long. Hallelujah. Oh, since I've been here, I don't know if you realize it, but in August, we was here a year. Now we've been here almost a year and a half. It just seems like that. You know why it seems like that? It's because we've been having one breakthrough after the other. And when God begins to move and God begins to do things, when God begins to great, create developments in the house of God, when God gets people that says, hey, that's it, devil. I'm tired of taking it. I declare war on you. I now I'm going to break through my walk with God. I'm going to defeat the enemy. I'm going to beat down the devil. I'm preaching to people here tonight that the devil's worked you over. We look around, we got a church that's about 95% filled to capacity. I didn't come here, amen, to stop now. I didn't come here to see this church go to this place and stop. Oh no, Brother Morales, I came here. You church, you people are ready for a great breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. It's time to take back what the devil has stolen from us. The backsliders, the cold in heart, the lukewarm, our family members who are sitting in jail, they're sitting in different places tonight. They should not be. God is saying, I am the God of a breakthrough. Come on, receive it tonight. Hallelujah. A breakthrough is any significant or sudden advance or development. It's also a significant achievement or increase. devil told New Life Apostolic Church, you're not going forward. When I got here, there was one person after the other that would come through my office, and they were hurting, and they was hurting deep, and the devil had been beating them down, and the devil had worked the former pastor over. He worked the former pastor's wife over. He worked the people over. He was working this church over. Why? He did not want uh, this church to get a breakthrough in God. But you hear me tonight. I'm declaring to the devil. I'm declaring to this church and to this city under the authority of the name of Jesus uh, and the blood of Calvary we are having a breakthrough in God and the devil can't take that away I said the devil can't stop this forward movement in God why because he is the God of a breakthrough in our life hallelujah church church so many times we use that word so carelessly. For some of you old folks, you young ones, just bear with me a moment. I remember 
Oh, man. You preached at me this morning. I got to remember this for just a moment. <laughs> it's not a bad remember. Well, it was at the time, but now I've been delivered. I remember one night I was a sinner boy, young, me and my buddies, and we had decided to go to a rock concert in Stockton, California. And I was into this stuff. I played a lot of their music. And I, I liked this group. It was called Ten Years After. Some of you old ones might remember it. You young ones, it's just kind of, phew, go be ahead. And uh, they was pretty popular, and there was a concert going. I went to my mom. She just started going to church and got the Holy Ghost. And she says, no, you're not going. Eh, you know, that's just mom. I snuck out anyway and went. And we went there, and I, I will never forget that evening when that rock and roll music was blaring. Now, you think this is loud. I'm going to tell you what. They had equipment that, 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 would, that made our equipment uh, almost, uh, almost non-existent. And I think we got great equipment. But that stuff, I mean, they had speakers. They had this stuff lined up all across the stage. And nothing was turned on low. It was all cranked up. It was all loud. And they got that music of playing. And that there was those songs, if they call them songs, they got the going. And I mean to tell you, there was several thousand. I probably, I think there was 10 or 15, 20,000 people there. And, and we was in that crowd. I'll never forget that night. Because I remember everybody was screaming at the top of their lungs. And they were yelling. They were cheering and I was just right in the middle of it and I tell you right now if I can give the devil amen the scream and the cry and the hollering of my voice if I can get loud for the world if I can get excited for the devil and his music then bless God I can come to this church and have a Holy Ghost break through in God and get loud and get excited for God I am not that young man no more. I am what I am. That's what Pipe I said. I am what I am. Boop, boop. Oh, sorry. You got to have a little comedy in there. What am I saying? I'm saying when I came out from that uh, and there was a, a, a significant change in advance uh, and a significant development in my spirit uh, I got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, like you got it this morning Anna it changed my world I begin to not want to, to achieve the things of this life uh, I did not want the increase uh, of what the world could give me but rather I wanted everything that God was willing to give me in his house I wanted a brand new touch every day I wanted a breakthrough in God every day why because I knew as long as I got a breakthrough with God the devil couldn't hurt me and my party friends couldn't affect me hallelujah a breakthrough hallelujah it is Almost an act of knowledge, a breakthrough with God is almost like a spiritual diplomacy that God puts in our heart. And that there's spiritual knowledge and diplomacy that he puts in our heart when we get baptized in Jesus' name and we get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what it does? It does something that there is no drug and there is no alcohol and there is no bar room and there is no party scene that can do. I'll tell you what it does when we get this spirit of knowledge and diplomacy in our heart. What it does, it removes the barriers to progress. It stops 
face uh, the devil in his tracks uh, when we get a breakthrough in God and we let God have it all. God, here's my failures. Here's my wounds. Here's my anger. Here's my hurt. Here's my financial failure. Here's my broken marriage. Here's my broken home. Here's my broken life. I give it to you, God. Why? Because I need the God of a breakthrough in my life. I need God to get me beyond the barriers that the devil has put in my world. Hear me, saint of God. Hear me, visitor friend. Your drugs, your alcohol, your party scene. It is nothing but a barrier between you and God. But God says, I'll go before you. Children of Israel, you don't belong here. This is not you. I'm going before you. And I'm going to break the way forth. I'm going to tear down the enemy. I'm going to make a way for you that you've never had before. And all your failures, all your re repetitive failures. He says, I'm here tonight to, to break down those walls the devil has tried to stop you with. You hear me, saint of God. He's a God of a breakthrough. He's a God that breaks down the forces of evil before us. One day, the children of Israel, as you heard preached a little bit on this morning, led by a man who really did not want to lead, a man called Moses. God says, you're going to go and you're going to deliver my people from bondage. Moses said, God, I can't do this. Look at me. He had a speech impediment. They, the Bible theologians said he stuttered. Now, did he stutter? I don't know. I wasn't there. And neither was they. But he did have a speech impediment of some kind. He said, I, I, I can't do this. I, I killed a man in defense of Israel. But yes, but I, 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 I'm no good. And if I go back there, they're going to kill me brother once again the spirit of the sin of remembrance he, he, he said God I can't do this but God said if I tell you you can do it you can do it but, but God look I'm nothing but he said let me give you some instruction man of God Moses he said throw your staff onto the ground and the Bible says he threw his staff to the ground and it turned to a snake he said grab it by the tail he did it turned back into a staff he said but God I don't know if that's enough and he said stick your hand in your cloak he stuck his hand in his cloak and he said pull it out he pulled it out and the Bible says his hand was eaten up with leprosy he said, Moses, stick your hand back in your cloak. He done it. He said, pull it out. He pulled it out. It was clean and healed immediately. He said, Moses, I've already prepared the way for you. I've already broke up the enemy forces. I've destroyed the doubt. I have destroyed the enemy already. All you've got to do is step beyond the place you've been. You've been to this spot many times, Moses, but you've never gone beyond it. He said, Moses, right now, I'm telling you, you've got to step beyond it. Moses was afraid like some of you are right now but he said okay God and God sent Aaron his brother along with them to speak for him but Moses at that point realized I've got I've got I must advance and progress forward because God has told me he is my breakthrough of my past and failures. I'm preaching to somebody here. You have stood at the edge of a great breakthrough in God. He's been waiting for you 
He's saying, I can heal you. I can fix it. I can make it okay. I can make it all right. I can turn your world right side up. I can fix the broken in your life. But you've got to get beyond where you are right now. Who am I preaching to? Come on, musicians. We're fixing to sing. We're fixing to open this altar. I'm challenging this church. Hallelujah. 2016 me needs to be a double portion of 2015. There's no reason and why we cannot be in another building twice as many people by the end of this year why because the God of a breakthrough is in this house he's saying I will supply I will increase I will advance you according to my will and purpose in glory